Hey traders, this is Christian Primer, it's Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Thursday, March 7th. So a bit of a painful day uh, for the market for most people, unless you've been kind of chomping at the bit to short, which I know there's a lot of people who have been doing that and kind of been frustrated for the last two months. So uh, they probably have had a little bit of a reprieve the last couple of days playing, you know, getting, uh, you know, making some money on the short side. Um, I could tell you that I really haven't been doing that, um, you know, and I, and I always speak and tell you what I'm doing. But, um, you know, for the most part, I still see a lot of strength and I still see some reasons to be bullish. Um, overall, I would say so for the most part, if you're not, you know, super bearish and if you haven't been playing the short side with two hands, uh, you know, probably a little bit of a, of a painful day. Right. I mean, the Q's finished on one point two percent. They were the they were actually the worst performer in the major indices, right? They were. I came into today kind of saying that they've been holding up pretty well, and uh, they finished on 1.2 percent. Small caps, which have been leading us, have been the worst. They finished. Uh, they finished down 90 basis points, and SPY finished down right right around the same thing, uh, just under a percent. And um, so what was? And I'm going to go through the technicals and and those and and come up with some support levels, but. Um, yeah, I had to leave midday because I went over to Real Vision to do a trade idea video. But um, when I left, I was like, oh, things are kind of looking up a little bit. Biotech went green and biotech finished green on the day. Uh, I'm looking right now, X XBI finished uh, flat for the day, up three basis points. The home builders finished up today. So what, you know, thoughts on on overall, right? So let's let's talk about the technicals and. Uh, you know, I will give you my thoughts because I, you know, we had a lot of good questions in the trading room. A lot of questions like, what, you know, why is the market going down? Um, what's is it the trade stuff? What, you know, what, what's what's going on with, with the market overall? Why, why is it so weak? And by the way, if my mic cuts out, I'm having some mic problems. I have to get a new headset, and I forgot to do it yesterday, and my spare is not working either. But um, in any event, so you know, we kind of blew past uh, some support that I was looking at. So. You know, S and P or SPY, the level's about the same, right? So right around here. Now we could rebound. We're actually back above. Um, this is what I was kind of touting on Twitter. Was saying, watch this 275 in the SPY, and we'll go. I'll I'll switch to SPY because I know more people look at SPY probably who are watching this video than S and P futures. Making a guess there, but um, so 275, right? We've taken that level out. The way these things work. Is if there's none, if there are no virgin point of controls behind, sometimes we see we could actually bounce from there, right? If I don't explain that, this is something I go over in the trading room all the time. But I look for these things to be taken out, and then we could possibly see a reversion back. Now, that's just the one hour chart, so you kind of have to put the puzzle together a little bit. Uh, so if we go back to the one hour, what, what do we know here in the one hour? Which is basically what, for the last couple days, is that we have, uh, you know, broken, we've lost the five day, which we were doing great. And I was a big, big advocate for a while about how price, how I was kind of staying with the trend because price never really broke the five period moving average. So not only have we broken the five, but we've broken the, the 20, right? The short term, that's the, um, the blue is the 20. Now we haven't broke, price hasn't broken the 20 day moving average, you know, since uh, it was below it, you know, back in the beginning of January. So this is different now. So how to handle this, right? Uh, you kind of have to back off a little bit and and manage, you know, have a game plan for managing risk. That's what I do. This video is not for for advice or anything like that. It's just just giving you inf it's information purposes only. I'm telling you what I do, but you kind of have to back off, right? Those are there's a reason why price gets above the short term moving averages and stays stays there. There's momentum in the market. Now we've lost the mo we've lost all the upside momentum, right? And and um, I don't want to say the the wheels have have have, uh, <laughs> have gone off, but you know we've got some downside pressure. We've got some selling going on. So where it stops, you could guess at this point. It could be that one hour VPOC that I mentioned on on the one hour. It could be the bottom of value at 271. It could be the 200-day moving average. You just don't know yet because price is going a little bit too fast. So if you don't know and if you don't have a strong level to trade against, you kind of just ease off. Um, IWM is a little bit different. This is the one that we've really been analyzing uh, because this was the first one that showed the cracks and broke down. You know, this had a VPOC down here and the price just kept going. Um, I was expecting a bigger bounce than this um, where we really got oversold, but, you know, 
it, it didn't happen. Um, I was wrong. I, I, I thought that would happen. The other level that I mentioned um, in yesterday's video and on Twitter is this 151 and a half level. One, or one, sorry, 158, 150.75. That's the bottom of value. So this could bottom first. It's still too early. You know, you're, we're kind of grasping at straws because the market is moving too is moving too quickly to the downside. If I would have said at lunchtime today, you know, where we bounced, and if we would have, you know, had a hammer bar, I would have said, great, you know, that's a really good sign. But we just didn't do that. Um, at 11.45, right when I left, uh, is basically the high of where where we where we were today. So, um, and I could look at the cues too. And we can talk a little bit about the, the selling pressure. I thought the, the FANG stocks, my goodness, man, they are just a piece of, you know what, um, they just cannot get going, the FANG stocks. Um, I've talked for a while about the FANG stocks, how they get one day of the week, they've got some good good momentum to them, and then they, they just die. Now, who knows, maybe that's a, that's a buyback program that they've got going, that they're buying one day of the week, but that's pretty much it for the FANG stocks. And if you're... You know, I, and again, I, I have an Amazon position on. Um, I traded a little bit of, of Netflix today, too. But this is not where the momentum is, I'm sorry to say. Now, you could argue that the last few years, and they've been great trades. But you have to recognize if something is changing in the marketplace. And for right now, if you're not admitting right now that the FANG stocks are not do not have the market leadership, then I don't know what else to tell you. But they just don't. Um, they do not have the market leadership and they're really tough to trade. So, I mean, I look at them every day because again, I, you know, they're big companies. They make up big portions of the S&P, but they have not, they've not been acting well now uh, since basically, you know, towards the end of last year. And um, they've never really recovered. I mean, look at the difference between Amazon and SPY. It's really been a drag on the, these have been a drag on the market. So I don't, you know, we could come up with reasons for this. Um, and I thought maybe Amazon would get going here because it's been, a, it's been a very big underperformer. Um, Facebook got going a little bit this week, but stalled. I mean, you know, these things. So I, I think you, you, you could be a shorter term trader, you know, had two big days and, you know, uh, looks like almost an evening star to me. Um, but I thought it would take out this version point of control. It's, it, now, it's not game over. This is not really an evening star. Evening star would have to take out this level. But um, I just think there's better places right now in this market. Um, I keep watching. You know, we saw the big call buyer in Netflix. And what does it do today? It goes down 2%. I mean, these things were down much more than, than the market was down. Uh, so, again, I have nothing against these stocks. I'm just, I, I you know, I put out my opinion and... and um, my view because I want to help people and I see people just like just constantly like looking for momentum in these stocks and guys it's just not there right now um, so again keep, continue to keep an eye on them um, watch the option activity maybe big buyers come in because it could it could turn around like that um, but right now they're just they're a mess um, these stocks are a mess and again all you have to do is look at some other areas of the market that have exploded higher. I mean, you know, even though IWM has been pulling back, but but even look at the Qs. The Qs have done much better, and they're big weights in the Qs. So, uh, you know, there's a change in leadership that's that's been going on. Okay, so let's talk about. Um, no, I went through the Qs, IWM and Spy, and basically, like I said, I I'm not. Um, I know people like when people have answers, right? When they say, okay, this is going to happen. It's okay not to know. And I don't know right now. We're just moving a little bit too too fast to the downside. You know, we didn't completely crumble at the end of the day, which is a small plus. Um, but I think you just need more time to let this get itself situated um, and, and find some support. Uh, so again, there's nothing wrong with that, right? We Keep in mind, it's March. You still have the whole year. Um, it's not the right, in my opinion, it's not the right time to really press uh, because, again, we're losing, um, you know, some things like the 20-day moving average. Uh, it really helps me to, to stay disciplined. 
Uh, some people don't like moving averages. It bothers them. They think it's they're overplayed. It really just helps me for risk perspective, right? Telling, knowing that we've lost the upside momentum is important. So um, let's talk about reasonings, right? So let me go to the weekly chart. This is something that we talked about. And again, I'm not trying to give myself a pat on the back, but this is why I do this research on the weekends. I work hard at this stuff. So, um, you know, I spend, <laughs> which my, my girlfriend does not like, uh, I spend a good portion of my Saturday, you know, doing the research while the market is closed so I could formulate a game plan. Um, so I'm not giving myself a pat on the back, but hey, I did the research and I've put the time in. Um, but look at where we've gone. We've gone all the way through to resistance. Right? These are predetermined value areas. These are not something I'm drawing in, but we did it. You know, we made the move all the way. So, right? Same thing with SPY. We've gone all the way through the value area, and look at that. We got rejected right at the top of value. So, that's the game. That was the game plan all along, and you know, other people have these levels. So. There's a bunch of ideas that are floating around. Like Twitter is just a wasteland, right? I, I heard today, which again, these are good questions. It's good good to ask questions. But oh, is it because of the trade deal stalled? Guys, don't you think if hedge funds, and again, I I, I don't want to sound like I'm being, um, uh, you know, overconfident or sarcastic, but hedge funds who have gotten long here, what do you think they're going to do once we lose the upside momentum? they're going to start taking profits. It's just how it works. Um, a couple other questions, people said, you know, why are we going down? I mean, the market goes up and it goes down. Um, I think a good level, I think Michael Santoli brought this up. Let's see if I can bring up a chart of SPY. Um, I like Michael Santoli a lot on CNBC. I think he does pretty good analysis. But we we're look, I think he was looking at something that I've noticed before. What was it, the 2016 uh, correction, you know, again, some of these things, they, they rhyme a little bit, right? So remember, um, what we did, I want to say on this, this move, right? We had a, we had a little bit of a correction here. We rebounded here. This might've been just a couple of days. Whoops. But even if it's a, if, even if it's a small time frame. Right, we were up here. We fell apart here in 2016. We battled back. I mean, this was this was a shorter time frame than what we're experiencing. But notice how we came back and we back checked. We retraced a little bit, and then we took off. So that I mean, I don't know that that's going to happen either. We would need to we would need to stop going down at this point. Um, you know, in the next couple of days, you know, because the more retracement, you know, it could also look like something like this. You know, this type of, you know, remember we had this big thing and then we fell apart again and then we got going. So there's all different types of outcomes. And I'm not saying that either one of these was going to happen, but you have to be a little bit. I mean, this is a straight up, I, you know, easy area of resistance um, to say, let's be smart. And again, you could still trade every day and you could put on a couple swing trades, but dial down your size, um, which is what I've been doing. And honoring your stops. That's the main thing. Honor your stops. But I but I can't illustrate this better of, of a level that we talked about last weekend. I mean, uh, you know. And if, and if you're new to trading, it's just how the market works. The market just doesn't go up in a straight friggin' line. <laughs> First of all, how many weeks did we go up? I was put this on Twitter. Eight? Ten? How many were, are you looking for? Fifteen? <laughs> <laughs> all right so i say this to for you to put things in perspective a little bit so what am i looking at i'm looking at the software plays right i like to look when we have days like this are very useful when you're kind of a little bit more relaxed and you don't have that much risk on uh and you could kind of just say who's going to come back first who's going to lead us higher um so i mentioned biotech you know actually after a nasty looking uh couple days 
came back and was flat today. Is this, you know, does that, does you, do you throw up the checkered flag and say, you know, uh, it's a finish line and this is going to pop back? No, not necessarily. I think you just have to watch it, but good that it didn't go down anymore today. Um, could be taking a pause too. We, you just, again, you just don't know. Um, what I think is very, was very good today was the software names. I mean, this is an area that I've been very bullish on. Uh, you know, as I talked about, the FANG stocks are not the market leaders anymore. I think the, the software is. Um, now, that's come in hard. Now, somebody said this, you know, because I was pretty, um, I, I sent out a lot of tweets about this this morning because I was noticing that w how well they were doing. Um, and somebody said, well, these were the first ones to go down. What, this week? Um, <laughs> so they really got overbought, right? Right. So, you know, look at look at the RSI. You know, and when things get overbought like this, they come down hard sometimes. But now we're into the 20-day moving average, and we'll see what it does here. But I saw things like, uh, you know, I got into AYX. Um, I did my research. I do my research after hours, not when the market is moving. I'm watching the tape when the market is um, when the market's open. But look at this AYX today. Nice turn on this one, up 6.2%. Um, I didn't see how all these finished, but Workday tried to go. It did not. Uh, team is another one that, you know, did not finish on the highs, but still up, you know, 70 basis points. ZS, beautiful, you know, up one and a half percent and and where a day where Amazon is down almost two percent. So you tell me um, what you think has leadership right now. And this is just one stock, but um what else? Uh, uh, Splunk, um, again, did not finish. The market was just, I think, too hit too hard. But still, half a, half a percent today. Um, really easy with this one. 50-day moving average. Use a stop there. It's, you know, got hit pretty hard after earnings. Big old reversal bar. So we'll see. What, you know, what else? And a couple names had earnings, which also kind of helped this group. GWRE did very well. Uh, but if we go to IGV and the movers, uh, there's a couple other names. So listen, I would rather be in the names that are acting well. Uh, second best performer was the name that we got involved in. Um, EA saw some calls today. NTNX also saw some calls today. Sp speaking of call activity, um, some buyers came in. So this name got hit really hard on earnings. So I did not take this trade. I've got a whole bunch of other trades. This is just too much of a mess for me. Um, but I get it. There were some calls, and that attracts people to a name that's gotten beaten up. But um, I would rather look for a name like Twilio, which I know is expensive. But, you know, it tried to come back today. Also finished up three quarters of a percent. All right. So this is where I'm, this is where I'm watching. I'm also watching um, medical devices. Um, which finished down again today, but on my radar, I think this group has gotten, again, hit a 52-week high and kind of got squashed. So once that happens, when you see a name, when it gets squashed like this, it usually takes some time to kind of build back up a little bit. So again, be patient. Let this little spout of volatility, which I'm hoping is just, you know, I like I said, I'm okay admitting when I'm wrong. I thought we would rebound as we were doing pretty nicely uh, midday. That's okay. Um, but I still think that this is just maybe a little bit of a bout of volatility after a big run. Um, you know, where I would be wrong, again, you always want to know where you're, where you're not right with what you're thinking. If we break that 271 in spies, then we got a bigger problem on our hands or more, more, of, a, more of a pullback. But I think it's in the cards for a spy to maybe come in here and settle in, right? There's some, there's some port here. So again, um, this is just the end of the video, but, you know, don't get too discouraged by what you're seeing. This is normal stuff, guys, um, for us to experience some volatility. Also, the VIX, right? The VIX closed at, what, 1650? W where'd you think the VIX was going to get to? A 10? <laughs> right? The VIX got to... Let's just put things in perspective and take a deep breath um, and not get too worked up about one day. I mean, I lost money today. At one point, I was up. When I when I left, I was uh, my peanut was in the green today. I lost a couple thousand dollars today. That's not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, I mean it, we got to we got to a thirteen in the VIX. Where did you think we were going to get to? A ten? And I'm saying this to myself too. 
But it's better, I think, for us to have a little bit of a vol volatility, and then it comes back out and we settle back in there. That's what I, that's where my head's at. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I, I I hope you enjoy the videos. I do, you know, love to analyze this stuff as well as uh, you know welcome a little bit of volatility. Even though I would rather have PNL positive PNL today, but uh, I think we also got a little bit too far ahead of ourselves. Um, you know, the last couple weeks, and and we've got that resistance to contend with. So, um, you know, final thought is, you know, what are we going to do with this resistance up here in the weekly chart? And I don't have the answer for this. And I mentioned this in the weekend newsletter. Either we're gonna we're gonna turn all the way back, we're gonna digest. You know, you know, uh, door number one just blasting through it was not did not happen. So now, now it's door number two or door number three, either digestion zone or we can move back. And I hope it's rather digestion zone, but we have to hang in here. All right, guys, have a great night. See you tomorrow.